Because I didn't do any coding that I can demonstrate this month, uh, instead I'm going to talk about a thing I didn't write, and then hopefully you'll all just forgive me and it'll be great. Um, there's a tool, or there's a series of tools, um, called, that started with a program called Ledger. I don't know if anyone knows it, but it's a command line for nerds like me. Uh, accounting tool. It's a double entry accounting system, but it's command line because that's always Ooh. what you always would have wanted, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, so there are now a couple of them. Uh, the one that I use is called HLedger, which is like Ledger but written in Haskell. I don't actually use the fact that it's written in Haskell, but I like it anyway. Because uh, like maybe if I wanted to help out with it, I could someday. Um, and there's also another one called in Python called Bean Count, and they all have like slightly different opinions and and you know these people think that this is a cool feature and these people think that feature is dumb and shouldn't be in the project and like they each have their own little hate on but basically they're cool um, and they all try to use roughly the same file format um, let's just quickly set up my environment because I had this all set up and then my computer turned off and I don't have it set up anymore uh, that's not what I wanted uh, okay, um, so basically what it provides is this, um, and this is probably going to be a bad demo if you're really interested in it. I also don't even use half of the features, so <laughs> if you're interested in it, uh, you should go look it up on the internet. But I'll, I'll give you an interest, and if you're interested in any of this, maybe you'll be interested, and if you're not, you might be interested in the features I'm not going to talk about. Uh, so basically the gist is that this is accounting software, so it's for keeping track of your dollars, or assets in general. Um, yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, so what this tool does other than, uh, in contrast to other ones, is that a lot of the other ones um, are more based around like a big sort of spreadsheety sort of thing. So like I've got this one, ignore the numbers because I think this is real data. but. Uh, so like this is a graphic-y one and it's got like, you know, a bunch of stuff in it and we don't need to look at what any of it is, but it's all fine and then like it's got a pie chart and that's cool. Sorry, what was that? That was a different piece of software called Homebank. It's okay. a similar sort of tool. It's also open source. Oh yeah, these are open source by the way. Um, and, and again, like basically you put your dollars in and you put your transactions in and you categorize them and it tells you like, hey, 30% of your spending is on food or whatever. Um, which is okay, but I wanted to get a little bit more into budgeting and it wasn't, I think it has modes for that, but I wanted to also try this out so the two just kind of came together and I did that. Um, so basically this is some demo data, uh, which means it's really small and a little useless and I'm going to show you it anyway. So this is uh, basically the format. So this is kind of my source file with all my transactions in it. Um, I happened to hand type this because it's not that bad, it's a pretty legible format. Um, but if, for people who do want to like automatically import from their bank or they want to automatically come from some API or whatever the hell they're doing, uh, it's also a relatively easy format to automate because it's just text in a file. Um, so it starts off, each uh, entry here starts off with a date. Uh, you can use a couple different date formats and it just kind of figures out which one you're using. Uh, I use the right one. Um, <laughs> Uh, then it's followed by uh, a memo, so this talks about, uh, this is just for the human, so that when I'm looking back at this and I want to know where my money came from or went to, that it tells me uh, this was my first transaction. That's not a good name, but believe me, it's probably cool uh, if you use it for real. Um, this is talking about which uh, account, uh, oops, my money is going to. Um, so in this case, I've built this, oh, it, it also comes with this nested hierarchy concept. Uh, it doesn't actually come with anything. Sometimes it makes assumptions if you're using some of the more advanced commands, like it assumes you probably have an assets account because that's kind of general practice. Uh, and so that convention can be useful if you're using some of those other tools that are like building a balance sheet or something. I'm not using most of those, but it seems like a good idea, so why would I buck convention for no good reason? Uh, but in some of them I kind of made it up. Um, so this is basically saying, this is specifically the money part of my assets uh, sub-account. Uh, I've got $34.91 going into it, uh, and that's coming from my income stuff. 
uh, account because in the double entry accounting there always needs to be a source and a destination that's the double part of entry um, and so in this case this is kind of my like money came in from the stuff that I sold uh, and in this case I don't need to provide a uh, uh, second number why is my delete key being flaky um, this is kind of the same what the uh, this is kind of the same as having typed the right numbers. Uh, so in this case, I'm saying, okay, uh, you know, $34 went into my money account, it came, $34 came out of my assets account. Uh, in this case, one of the advantages of using a tool is it knows that the numbers need to balance out or else it's wrong. Um, and so I, I'm just saying, okay, my money came from here and then like figure out where, how much I took. It's a pretty easy computation. Um, so that happened on the 21st of this month. I mean, it didn't, I wrote this an hour ago, but let's pretend. Living in our fantasy land. Is plus um, sign always a debit? Sorry? Is plus sign always a debit? Um, of the transaction? I mean, you can decide it can be whatever you want as so long as you're very consistent. Uh, in this <laughs> case, yeah, uh, in this case, no. Uh, in general, I am adding, I'm taking from my income account and putting it into my assets account. Right, so that would be a debit to assets and a credit from income. Uh, so that would yeah. make so on that transaction, your plus sign is a debit. Yes. But I'm looking at the silly Ben, and I'm wondering whether the plus sign is still. Uh, or yeah. Or reduce well, the liability. I uh, no. So in this case, well, we'll get to that in a sec. And I'm also probably doing this wrong because I am not an accountant, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me make that clear. This is not best practices. Um, so yeah, uh, over here I, I bought something with on a second day. Again, this time I'm pulling from my toilet paper expense. Uh, it was expensive. And this is being pulled from the assets money that I have. Um, oh, down here uh, I'm showing so, off a... Is that you have a category of toilet paper under your, that expense? I do now. Okay. By having used it, yeah. Uh, uh, down here I'm making uh, two different line items in my thing. So in this case... Uh, $10 went to Lion Food and 99 cents went to Laundry. Uh, and they both were drawn from my money account. Um, down here I did Laundry again. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't remember why I did some of these transactions. I imagine it'll come up. Uh, here on the 24th, um, in this case what I was attempting to represent was that I owe, I lent Ben some money that I want back. Uh, so I took some of my money and I gave it to Ben. Probably not best practices, we'll worry about that later. Then you got to sign backwards, according to your previous sign convention. Then I was wrong when I talked to you a moment ago. <laughs> uh, on the 25th, Ben gave me the money back, and then uh, this happened in the future, and I made a $100 expense, and it came out of my money. So, those are my, those are my, those are my journal entries. Uh, apparently I changed it, and I don't want to have um, so what does all of that get me? Uh, so there's this hledger command, and this is going to be like a little obtuse because it's command line, and that's what we do to ourselves. Um, but basically it gives me the ability to be like, okay, this is my balance. And it's reading from the file, and it's saying, okay, this is what you got. Um, you're $93 in the hole. Um, and you had $127 in expenses. Uh, $1.98 was for laundry, $10 was for lion food, $50 for, for toilet paper. There was this uh-oh expense that was $100, and uh, I received $34 in income, or whatever. Um, this is just all time? This is all time. But, uh, the, since uh, I can also, sorry, I can also do this one to give me uh, kind of my listing of items. The only real difference between this and the file that the, all of this data came from is that it's filled in its computed values. Uh, so for example, this one here uh, saw that there was a 1099 and a 99 and was like, okay, so it was 1198 or 1108, sorry. This is why I have a computer do stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is okay, but kind of useless. But um, the value of this basically is just the thing, other things it lets you do. Um, so for example, I could go in here and I could ask it like what things, uh, how much money did I spend overall on laundry? Uh, and it could be like, well, there were, on the 22nd you did a complex purchase that involved laundry and on the 23rd you did more laundry. Uh, Hledger print, I could turn back into balance and it could tell me just the expense of this, this one uh, value. 
Um, I can do things like uh, I can filter the balance specifically in the month, uh, not that year, uh, specifically in the month of April, uh, in which case the uh-oh expense that happened May 1st is, is not there. Um, in this case, we could see that my Ben liability uh, is is not reflected. The reason is that is that it became zero again, and when things get zeroed out, they they go away by default. But if that becomes important, uh, I can throw my E on there, and I can see that I've got this account that I have used at some point in the past, um, but that is zero valued. Um, in terms of scripting, uh, I can see that my overall expense is this uh, twenty seven dollars in the month of. Uh, where are we? April. Um, and then these are the like broken out line items for my subcategories. Um, What's the zero at the very bottom? Oh, uh, that's my total. Um, that's the check total. Yeah, which Proof. for most things should always be zero. Um, but in this case, well, not necessarily. So, so it should always be zero because your debit should equal your credit. Yes, if I always, if I'm always doing that, but I can also filter on things like expense, in which case it only shows me expenses. Uh, uh, in which case my my line items are thing because I filtered out all of my my credits or uh, debits or whichever is which. I'm not an expert in this. Um, uh, I could do other stuff. Um, so I can specifically, again, if I was interested in only the things that, like, what was that Ben thing that happened a second ago? Uh, I could look at my liability. I didn't spell it like that. No, what is it? Liabilities? Uh, liabil Whatever. Uh, the one with the E up here. Ah. <laughs> that one. Um, and now my fingers are off the keyboard. Uh, ben. So I can see like, okay, Ben, I did this and then this, and that's why it zeroed out. Um, it can also do a couple things like, um, I can do, yeah, this one. Um, so in this case, I can get a daily report, uh, which is not super exciting. Uh, but like these are my expenses per day, uh, which it is helpfully dumped off the edge of my really small terminal. Um, but this is kind of my this is my expenses as of the 22nd. This is the expenses of the 23rd. A lot of zeros because I don't spend a lot of money on things. And in this case, it's broken out by each of my categories. Um, I can also do uh, 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 cumulative. Uh, in which case it shows me like I spent a uh, 99 cents here, then I spent dollar 98, and then like that's kind of can remain constant for the rest of my time. Um, these are mostly just things that I might use in scripts for generating reports. This is basically why I'm interested in this. Is now uh, the uh, the graphical tool that I was using before was okay, but I felt that if it didn't have a button for it. That for for like the drill down I wanted, I was kind of just like, well, that sucks. Uh, maybe I can like export it to Excel or something. Um, whereas this I find has been a lot more useful for um, for just being able to break out into a script that I have that goes and commutes some some thing. Uh, I can do uh, instead of cumulative, I can do like an average, and this is now no, not on that one though. Um, this gives me like average expenditure per day, so you'll notice it kind of like goes up and then it jumps up and then as like, these zeros come in, I've got this kind of running average down to the bottom uh, that's going down so I can get a sense of like my average spending, not just on a particular, uh, not just on all expenses, but like specifically how much do I tend to spend on uh, toilet paper. Um, on average, about a dollar forty-five in this made-up data uh, per day, uh, or per month, or per you know per year. Oh, not that though. Um, that one's an easy average. Uh, but yeah, um, so that's kind of that sort of stuff. Um, what I'm actually using it for uh, is budgeting, um, or I'm trying to. Um, so in my actual data. Want to do here? Ooh, ooh, let's try this. Um, this is going to be an experiment. It's going to go bad. Uh, let's open up another one of these. Do I have a? 
So, let's do H ledgers. This is gonna be my real data, um, but I'm gonna turn, mm -hmm, uh, oops, into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is probably gonna fuck up. Look at that. Okay. Um, so basically, what I'm doing with my real data is I've got this uh, my income for a given month. Oh, by the way, there's a thing that Jesse introduced me to called uh, "You Need a Budget." It's relatively popular with people, um, but obviously, using a tool that someone else built would be boring. So I built this <laughs> shitty version. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I've kind of tried to, some of the things in there seemed sensible, and so I've tried to sort of model parts of it as I saw fit. Um, it's funny, we can still tell the magnitude of the numbers. Yep, and that's okay. Where's the income? So basically what I've, what I've done here is every time there's a, a dollar that comes in, like any time I get a paycheck a month, uh, let's say February, I put it into a bucket for comes up March, <laughs> uh, and then all of my expenditures in March I try to pull out of that bucket. Um, at the beginning of the month, I put them into this budget bucket, uh, and then each of the things in here um, okay, so kind of subdivided so that the numbers all kind of work out. Um, and then at the end of the month, any money that gets unspent, I put back into the budget category to close out all of my accounts so that I have a sense of how much I spend in a month what kind of excess or deficit I ran that month, uh, and um, and it doesn't also clutter up my view with all the accounts that have like 13 cents left in them. Um, so that's sort of the, the plan I've been working with, and it's been working pretty well, and the tool in general has given me some data that I sort of wanted, um, like this number over here tends to represent uh, how much money in a given month hasn't been pulled down into one of these sub accounts uh, or sorry no this is kind of how much money I've allocated overall this one over here gives me the number of like how much I have made that I did not allocate because that's how much is left after I've pulled them all out in my accounts uh, this one down here gives me like my running totals so far uh, expenses are overall um, and then again I can do I can kind of break certain things down in order to say, okay, in this month, how much did I spend on groceries? Okay, on this month, how did I spend on groceries because I've been trying to XXX or whatever, because um, that's a number now. Um, or uh, get, get, just get some sense of even just historically, even if without the budgeting stuff, how I actually, like where the money actually disappears to because it's surprisingly slippery. Um, but yeah, and so a lot of the tools have been kind of cool uh, in their scriptiness. Um, and so I've written a script, uh, for example, if I do this uh, register again, uh, and I instead do it per day over all of my... Um, per day over my assets uh, account. Uh, this is giving me like, okay, on this day, total, you spent this much. On this day, total, you spent this much, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this over here is giving me my cumulative total on the side. Uh, and what I can do with that is I can, essentially, I can take my uh, spaces again. Boop, 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 boop. I can do this and I can uh, cut them. Um, Uh, into these two. So this is my day and this is my like running total. And then I can feed that into a script which I can't find right now, but I, I wrote it at some point. Uh, and so like this is for example like a, a GNU plot plot where this is the day of the month stripped out and this is the like total so far. Uh, and I can run... Jesse's gonna like this. Actually he probably will hate it. I'm sorry Jesse. Um, I don't know how to feel anymore. Uh, so this is like my burn down uh, for a particular uh, category of interest. Um, so this is kind of like made up data, um, but you know, let's say I wanted to spend four hundred dollars a month on on dining out. What? Oh, toilet paper. I wanted to cut down my toilet paper spending uh, to do it to at most four hundred dollars a month. Uh, 
Um, so using the GNU plot script, which I cannot find, uh, I've kind of crafted uh, different tools have that I'm going to gloss over briefly um, that can kind of go in here. So one of the things, for example, is I is uh, it has essentially assertions. Um, so I could say like you know this should put my total at 190, uh, and then when I run my uh, my H ledger here, it'll be like, uh, no, uh, this was not 190. You said it should be 190, but like it was actually 100 or whatever. Um, or uh, the one that is an H ledger, the nor normal ledger, has a sense of an automated transaction, uh, which is a thing I can kind of put up at the top here and say, uh, you know, 2016, I don't remember the syntax, but something like, you know, X or something. Uh, and I could say um, RRSP, uh, what, okay, RRPS. Um, and so I could say that like I could take something from my assets, uh, money, and I could take $90 and I can put it into savings or something. And then this is a thing that the tool just knows about and then as I'm computing, uh, if there's a month boundary in my range, it could be like, aha, this transaction fits that, that pattern and it can go and like do that for me. So when I'm looking over my whole year, it could be like, okay, at the first of the month, these transactions did occur. H Ledger decided that was dumb. Um, I don't use them, it's fine. But like, you know, that's a feature that the tool at large does have. Um, and all of the f family of tools like this all roughly agree on this part of the syntax. Um, which means that there are some tools that exist uh, spanning them. So there are a lot of tools, for example, for taking uh, uh, the sort of file formats that a bank or a credit card exports and munging it into this so that you can just download the OVF file. Is it OVF? That sounds familiar. Or okay, let's just go with CSV file from your bank, punch it through this, this pre-written script and it'll just like dump into your file all of the transactions automatically for you. Um, or there's other ones that do, uh, that will look over, you run them on this input and it will go through and uh, essentially compute uh, like compounding interest. So if you had some account, you can tell it, hey, this account accrues compounding interest and it was like reads through all the entries and then dumps items at the bottom to be like interest. This is what you got. And then, you know, it's sort of automating those sorts of things. Um, so it's this, this scriptable take to accounting that appeals to people like me. And uh, yeah, it, it's been sort of neat because a lot of the other kind of accounting tools felt very graphic-y and, and kind of limiting. Uh, whereas this one doesn't necessarily do anything more, but it just feels like if I needed it to do something random, uh, it could, because I can do that kind of thing, because it's text and I can do almost anything with it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Questions? Can you do inequalities on your assertions? No. Only, only equalities? Yep. Yeah. Uh, because the assertions, the assertions really are there uh, just so that I can be sure that I haven't screwed something up. Um, so, for example, if I was closing out accounts, uh, like if I if I went to this um, Ben one down here, uh, I could say that my liability to Ben should now be zero. Um, and then when I run it, it's like, yep, that's totally fine. Uh, but if I go in here and I accidentally record that I gave Ben thirteen dollars instead of fourteen, that shouldn't have worked. Uh, okay, well, whatever, it's there. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, you only get one side. Yeah, maybe. Right, so it should, uh, now oh, oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Uh, zero dollars. There we go. Uh, so now it's saying, like, okay, you expected it to be zero dollars, but it was negative one, so there's something bad has happened. Um, the other time when that might be useful is if this was in fact, ah crap, if this was in fact 12 at some point, but then like later something else came through and I was like, oh, did I do that thing? So like I go back in here and I say like 24, silly Ben, and I duplicate it. Why am I duplicating it by my eyes? Um, in which case, again, it can tell me like, no, hang on, there's like $12 here. You intended to close this account out, but you duplicated it and you're a dumbass. Um, 
technically speaking. Um, so these, these assertions are just kind of bare bones, really simple assertions. Um, they're not really meant for the, the inequality sort of stuff because it really is a, it's not a, a suggestion or an annotation. It really is an assertion in that it like, the tool fails to present output if your assertions are bad. Um, so it, it's not so much like a, hey, look out, this is wrong. Instead you run it, it's like error on this line, you said it should be zero and it was one. I'm, I'm done, I'm not gonna run anymore. Really is an it's an assertion assertion okay. uh, and, and like any good assertion there's a command line flag for ignore assertions just run through my data anyway uh, which can sometimes be useful for tracking down why it was wrong um, uh, other features it has um, that I, I didn't actually cover while I this is why the equals zero worked uh, is I can also I can uh, have uh, given Ben this uh, but I could also have given him uh, one monkey. I don't know if this is gonna work. I've never done this before. Great. So now, like, I'm down a monkey, uh, and also a thing. And so, like, my my dollars have balanced out, but like my Ben liability is still one monkey because that's like this new currency uh, that I'm using. Um, and then you know, yeah. So so you can do. It doesn't actually care what dollars are, it just recognizes that things following numbers are currency. Um, so in this, I've kind of assumed it's Canadian dollars, because that makes sense to me, uh, but it could, I could, it could represent whatever I want, and then like, you know, this one could be USD, because Ben had a weird need that day. Um, and now like, you know, again, I have my Canadian dollars, and I've got my USD here. Uh, it doesn't really care, and it, the tool works with all of that. Um, and specifically, uh, if I was to go through here, um, you know, it would show that my, my, uh, yeah, whatever, liability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it can do more complicated things that I haven't used it for with, um, uh, currency conversion and stuff. I can do things like, um... You know, this is my US dollars and the conversion rate on this day was 0 0.5 and so in Canadian dollars it balances out in this way. I don't need any of that, but like it's there. Um, uh, it also has a thing, I'm probably going to screw up the syntax here, uh, but it also has a, a thing for like uh, assets, uh, money, money, okay, monkey it is. Um, <laughs> So I could say like one monkey at, I think, $12 or something. Uh, and it could see that like I've got a monkey here and the price of that monkey that day was $12. Um, I don't remember why that's useful, but it's a feature. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's for inventory tracking, that makes sense. Um, so I can keep track of that sort of stuff too. I don't use it for that because again, I, I'm, I'm actually not using it for accounting specifically. I'm using it for budgeting in this kind of narrow, weird way where I half envelope everything. Um, there were other questions though. I was actually going to ask about the Oh great, yeah, it's gone. Uh, and then he had a question too, but he's gone now uh, with his ice cream truck ringtone. Um, I love to burn down track. I know, right? It's so good. Um, the other thing uh, that I liked about oh, never mind. Okay. Um, at the end of the month, with my the, because I've got my budget split out by month, um, I can actually like move stuff explicitly. Like the, so, the things that the roll forwards, like my bi monthly electricity bills or whatever, I could sort of take from March's electricity account and put it into April's electricity account, which zeroes it out, which is kind of the whole point. Uh, whereas some of the other things that I want to more just like, if I didn't spend it, that's great. It all just kind of goes back into my income box and I can tell how much income I didn't spend, but uh, the stuff that rolls forward doesn't get counted in that number and stuff like that that I've, I've been pretty happy with. But yeah, and so like, oh, one of the other things I've got is I've got this, um, again, because it's a text format, I haven't really written any scripts to do automatic entry yet because I actually want to sort of reconcile by by my brain. 
Um, but I do have a Vim key binding, or a Vim uh, macro that I've got set up. So for example, if I was doing my normal budgeting thing and I've got my assets here, I can just push at and W and it's like, okay, great. It is drawn from the assets budget 2016-04 laundry line item. Uh, and that sped things up substantially because that's a lot of boilerplate to type out every time. Uh, and like typing the date, I kind of have to do anyway because I'm using my eyes for things and the words I have to make up. Uh, and where I'm drawing it from, I have to type because that's my category, but I can use Vim's uh, autocomplete uh, for like uh, that. Um, and then I can put my dollars here, but I kind of have to type that, and then I can just at W to drop down my line item, and I'm pulling from my budget. So like, uh, even though I haven't scripted it, the fact that it's just Vim and text is something that I have kind of exploited to make my life a little better. Um, Do you have it in Git? Hmm? Do you have it in Git? Which? The, by budget? Oh yeah! Yeah, oh it also has includes, um, so I've got a, a couple budget entry for like my bank account, my credit card, my wife's credit card and stuff. Um, and then I can just have this one file that sort of sets out all the things and then includes my, my things, which makes reconciling a lot easier because then, you know, when I'm looking at my credit card I don't have to filter through and be like, where the hell did I leave off in this transaction log? Because I do this like every couple days or so. Uh, I can just go to the bottom of my credit card file, I can look at my credit card and be like, that one, and then everything under it is new and I need to re-enter, and the includes sort of take care of all that. Um, so yeah, just command line stuff, and it makes me happy for some reason. Uh, did you have another question? I just had a comment. I really like the event log type data structures for things, because like you you might record just the result of it at the end, like sort of like a, as a state in a database. It's like, this is what it is now, this is what it is now. But you can obviously derive all of that final state from a series of events. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I guess I wanted to say that. I feel so passionately about it that I want to be <laughs> Yeah, well, and like really. Sorry? The mafia invented the love of Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And stole it from them. And that's fine, because uh, <laughs> it works. Um, and yeah, because because um, the the system has uh, these kind of query languagey fit parts, uh, which I haven't even gotten much into, but like I can filter by account, I can filter by date, but I can also uh, it allows me to uh, oops. Ah, damn it, why are you doing this to me, computer? Um, <laughs> um, uh, there are other features where like, I can go in, for example, and I can like tag certain transactions. So for example, uh, you know, I, I could go in and be like, what are all the transactions revolving my home? Uh, and I can just go in at, at the end, and rather than like doing whatever, I can be like, I can filter for transactions involving my house. It can give me all of the expenditures for my house. And now using that, it can re-derive like my new totals, pretending that only house transactions were involved. I could see that it cost me, you know, $14. It, that's not a real number, I made that up. Um, and, yeah, and so like they've got this whole sort of metadata-y thing. Um, I've also used the multi-currency stuff, even just for marking down uh, like sometimes when I'm reconciling my wife's credit card, their purchases, and I'm like, you know, the, the credit card log says like, PayPal, Swift, Swift, and it's like, well, okay, but when I'm looking back at this later, I might want to be like, oh, this is where the money went, so, you know, I'll, I'll mark down like that this was a, a $34 purchase, um, and there's also this, uh, this like question, uh, currency and I have one question regarding this transaction uh, and then at the end of the month uh, or or even earlier I could basically say like show me all of the transactions involving uh, and then it'll give me like oh these are the ones I had questions about um, and if I do H ledger balance again um, it'll tell me like there are one transactions I have questions with in this data set um, so I can know that like, oh, I should go back and remember to ask her about this thing so I can put a more real uh, log up here so that I can you know, kind of keep everything good. Um, I am keeping it in Git because it's a series of things. Um, so I can also go back and see like, you know, I've screwed up my data at some point. Where did it change? Um, it, is, it, is it a magic backup? 
because uh, I can just get pushed to a server I control, and now I have two copies. Um, yeah, magic. I'm pretty happy with it. And in theory, uh, you could use it for anything that involves, you know, tabulating numbers for reasons. Uh, accounting has to do what it's for, but like, I, would, I wouldn't be overly surprised if at some point I end up using this to keep track of something else that involves like categories and a t running total. Um, but uh, probably not, but we'll see. It was like a good tech, like a uh, check of the commit history and like spit out the number of lines changed by each user and the thing. Sure. Like that. that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the webpage definitely stuff that follows a similar thing where you like have pages and you want to get aggregate. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and, and because this thing does tags and stuff, it can you can break down all sorts of random user data and filter on that kind of stuff. Um, HLedger also has, a, specifically HLedger has a, a web UI. I have never looked at it, but I've heard it's cool. Um, so you basically would just like, I would run like HLedger, I don't have it installed, but like you'd run HLedger web, it would be like, okay, it would spin up a quick little Haskell server in this directory. Uh, and then if you navigate to localhost with it, you've got charts and bars and lines and stuff from all of this crap. Um, I don't know if it's useful or not, I've never used it, but like people say it's neat. Uh, and if you're someone who's like one foot in the, in the command line but doesn't want to write a script that dumps into GNU plot, um, then maybe that's more your style, but it's still an option. Uh, other questions? The uh, before the colon on <laughs> yeah. the account designations. Yeah. We we're using the standard accounting financial classes. Probably poorly. Is well. <laughs> that's the next question. But are those built in? No. Um. So or have you just adopted the terminal? Uh, nothing is built in. Um. So like I can go in here and go into demo and I can make a future purchase that is also like whoop. Go and it's just you know fourteen dollars in whoop, um, and then and now there's like this whoop top level thing, um, so like basically accounts are just created whenever you use them the first time and they go away when they're empty unless you specifically ask for them to stick around. Uh, I've tried to sort of stick with these ones just because it's like these are things that I have and these are expenses I've made. Um, so so I could deviate, but I didn't see a good reason to. I had to come up with some word, and that one seemed reasonable. Um, uh, there are some commands, um, like, is it balance sheet? Um, this one assumes, uh, this is a, a built-in thing for producing a particular kind of report, and this one assumes that there's an account called assets that has things and an account called liabilities that has things, because that's what this one is intending to report on. Um, so if you aren't using the built-in names, this will give you a lot of zeros, but like, if you're not using these, uh, these sort of built-in reports, then it doesn't really matter. Um, and even with these reports, there's probably a way to tell it what you, oh Jesus, uh, <laughs> so a way to tell you uh, which things there were, um, but yeah, I don't know, uh, they got a bunch of stuff. What was in the rules file? Oh, the rules file, um, the, ugh, crap. the rules file is actually auto-generated unless you're doing something with it. Um, so this is specifically about um, pulling in CSV files and stuff. Uh, so this is, for example, uh, saying that like the first line of my CSV is empty because it's headers. These are the what the columns are. Uh, this is what the date format should be expected. This is my default currency. No idea what iTunes has to do with anything. Uh, oh, this is a rule. So like if if the word documentation in my CSV file. It has the string iTunes in it, then assume that it's coming from my expenses entertainment account. To be honest, I've never used this. Um, it, every time you run a certain command, it will be like, oh, did you mean that you wanted me to auto-generate a rules file? And it just dumps an example one in my stupid <laughs> folder. And then I go through and I delete them. Uh, 
but they are there for, for if the sort of thing is interesting. Um, so like if I was doing a lot of CSV imports, they would be very useful. Or uh, I think the rules file also has things to do with currency conversions that I was talking about earlier. Uh, so if I wanted to take all my Canadian dollars and like represent them in American dollars, uh, the, my rules file would describe like roughly how that should break down um, or something like that. Um, yeah, other things to hear with your ears. Okay.